changing minds, changing attitudes, bring ourselves to live a peace and one, show some love, hold each other. Welcome to the Princess Pata Fabio Show. On this show, we change minds and change attitudes on how you perceive things in life generally. In life, we have so many questions but fewer answers on certain, certain issues that we are facing. And that's why I'm here, to give you the kind of answers that you may be looking for for the questions that you have. I am your friend, I am your sister, I am your coach. I'm here to make your day a blissful one. Welcome. We are changing minds and changing attitudes. You are watching the Princess Pata Pato Show. about myself you know that's actually a question that when I get asked I just begin to wonder like where do I start to talk about myself change your minds and change your attitudes patience Christopher Akwan is a daughter of late Chief C.B. Akwan of Nkot Edemedet in the Kono local government area of Akwaba Sibom State and Miss Regina Udo Akwan of Nkot Nko in the Kono local government area. I am um, the only child of my mother and the fifth of my father. I practically have such a wonderful um, childhood to share because basically I never had one actually if you want to ask about my childhood. I was sexually molested at five, eight and thirteen and I have grown past those years and I am who I am today. Princess Pat Aquabio. Married to Sir Ibanga Aquabio from Ukani Cotton Twin in the Sienujim local government area of Akwabasibum State of Nigeria. And we are blessed with four beautiful children, two boys and two girls. Um, I am an entrepreneur, a preacher of the word of God, a writer, an actor, a public speaker, motivational public speaker. I am a talk show host. And oh, I forgot to mention, I hold a dual citizenship of the United States of America and Nigeria as well. I'm a mentor to a whole lot of people. Um, I studied investment and corporate finance at Georgia State University in Atlanta, Georgia, with a double concentration on investment and um, corporate finance. So I have a finance degree. I have an honorary doctorate degree from the Provost University. Um, in Delaware, Delaware, United States of America, Doctor of Divinity in Divinity. What else am I going to say? I'm a farmer. I grew up in the plantations of Ikom, um, Bendegekem in Ikom local government, then now we're in local government, and of course Ikom in Crossover State. And uh, pretty much I am a God-made woman. Um, I love good things. I love nice things. I'm a human rights activist. I'm not a feminist human right activist. I believe that the world could be a better place if we make it a better place, if we put in our best to give it the best that we want to see, if we could be the change that we wish to see, and positive change, actually. Um, I'm social political by nature. Oh, I hope one day I'll become a full politician because I believe that I should be. And in my wall of contact, I'm a leader. <laughs> if I were to be a tree, what kind of tree will I be? Coconut. I would be coconut. Yes, I would be coconut. Why will I be coconut? Coconut represents God. When you open the coconut, you see it has three eyes, right? God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the water in the coconut, nobody knows how it gets into the coconut. So that's a mystery that no human being has been able to unravel. I would be the coconut so that I can remain a mystery to the world.
but not my creator God. My spiritual journey started when I was five years old. I had to look for God after my first sexual um, molestation incident. I had to be closer to God. I started fasting very early in life because my mother was a member of Church of Christ, and she still is. And my father, Jehovah's Witness, he left Catholic and became Jehovah's Witness and died as a Jehovah's Witness. So I started looking for God at five. I started my quest for God at five. Then I got into full-time evangelism in the Jehovah's Witness, preaching door to door at age eight. I started preaching about the, um, the Christ that I found. And of course, we lived in Calabas, so I used to go to Chapel of Redemption, even though my mom was Church of Christ and my father was Jehovah's Witness. I had to find God for myself. So I had friends who used to go to Chapel of Redemption. And so I used to follow them to Chapel of Redemption to look for God as of that time. And I just kept uh, ministering about God. But I had one belief, though, because of my childhood and what it was growing up and how difficult it was for me, even though I had a wealthy father, was that whatever God said I would be is exactly what I would be. I went through a lot of victimization. I went through a lot of blackmail. I had to deal with blackmails. You know, things would get missing in the house. It would be that I was the one that took it. You know, the typical African um, Nigerian structure kind of lifestyle here in Arquivo. Um I found God, well, I front-slided, because I, I don't like to say I backslided. I front-slided when my father died in 1998, and I was in the States, in the United States, and I heard my father's death. It really cut through me. So I felt that God didn't love me enough, that my father didn't have to die, because my father went through so much for me. Okay, this is the point where the test is going to come, but I'm going to try to hold it. Um, my father went through so much for me to... Um, be who I am today. He went through a lot of insult and <sighs> so much, but he gave me his best. So when my father passed on, for two years I didn't go to church. I met God again in a clubhouse with my boyfriend. Then I was in a clubhouse, you know, dancing, you know, and then it's like everything just disappeared. And it's like I saw this light, so it was just me and this light. And he said to me, if the trumpet were to sound today, where would you spend eternity? That was it for me until today. And then we started looking for churches with the guy I was dating as of that time. And finally, we got to Glory House World Church in um, Tarker. Then it was at um, College Park. We, or conference, the conference center, and then moved to College Park, and then now in Tarker, Georgia, Pastor Chizu Denwa. And that was when I started ministering again. Um, got the gift of speaking in tongues and began to speak in tongues and I began to prophesy and God just began to use me from us of that time. And then I got ordained um, as an evangelist in Glory House World Church. And my ministry kick-started publicly November 28, 2009 here in my own state, Akwabasibum State in Lumeridian, when I launched my first gospel album, Right on time and after that it's been every year releases um i have four albums audio and i have two um i think i have three rather three cds videos um out there in the market right now on itunes and then of course the church well i founded the part of Papi ministry which takes care of what i do personally for God, and then I founded the church, the City of Praise Worldwide Prophetic Ministry here in the city of Uyo, out of Pam. And so far for me, it's been great. The church is growing. God is growing his church, and it's been wonderful. I've met wonderful people that I am so grateful for um, meeting them, and I thank God for my life. Well, what do I look forward to in terms of my Christian work and my spiritual work with God? continue to impact my generation, changing minds, changing attitude on how we praise God with an attitude of gratitude worldwide. And I want to impact Africa because I strongly believe that the such light is coming to Africa now. Um, God is going to compensate Africa for um, all the things that Africa has gone through. So I see a greater vision for me. Of course, the cathedral is going to be built for the city of praise um, here in the city of Uyo. And of course, any other place that the Holy Spirit will direct for us to build the city of praise. I cannot do the work alone. And so workers are needed for the job ahead of me. 
I don't see me finishing my race on earth unaccomplished. I definitely know that I will finish my race well and I will finish it with a crown of glory because my final destination is heaven where God dwells. What excites me right now? Princess Patak Babio show. <laughs> That's what excites me right now. Ah. Uh, Princess Paragraph should actually do excite me. I love talking to people. I love getting people to understand that things are never what they seem, that there's more to life than what meets the eye, you know? And um, ministry, I love ministry. I, I love ministering before the sense. I love talking about Christ. If you've gone through, have the things that I've gone through and God keeps bringing you out, <laughs> What else than talking about the God that is always right on time to save you out of trouble and be there for you. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Ministry and the show. My kids excite me. Yes, the word of God. My husband excites me and all. Good people excite me, actually, when I get to meet good people. What is the best thing that has happened to me this year? Princess Patak Babu show going live. <laughs> because... Why that, has, why that is so is because Princess Pat Akpavio show was birthed years ago, over decades ago. My life, I've been thinking about talk shows and you know how I want to use the platform to talk to people about life and the things that I have gone through. So yes, my dream coming true this year, June 16, when I aired my first episode of the show, Princess Pata Pabu show. Yes, that has been something that has really excited me this year. That's my good news this year. The world doesn't like people who tell the truth, all right? But hey, we're going to change the narrative on that. You see, one thing I like about life is that I prefer to write my story, my narrative. I don't want people writing my story and giving me their narrative or their description of what they think my narrative should look like. So I prefer to write my narrative by myself. So, yes, I would say, affirmatively, very ascertained in my spirit, in all ramification, I strongly believe that they call me controversial because I dare to tell them the truth that they are running away from. And it's like usually I'm in their closet or crawling in their backyard. That's why they would say that I'm controversial. And I dare to bring to bear the things that society has made a norm to be negative. And I try to bring it out into a positive light. So yes, the truth. I tell the truth, really not caring whose ox is God. Hmm. My height, I'll be taller. <laughs> Become more intimidating. People see you, you know. I'll be a giant or something. <laughs> nah, man, I wouldn't change anything about me. I love me the way I am. That moment when I was in Wellstar Kennestone Hospital, having a CS for my second child, and I had an outer body experience when my body left. My spirit left my body, and I saw myself ascending. And I met this handsome man in the air. And I told him that I was tired of everything about life, that I didn't want to do it again, that I believe that I have given birth to two children and I'm sure my husband can do it on his own. And he said to me, no. Number one, your time is not yet up on earth. You haven't even started to accomplish half of what we sent you down to earth to do. And your husband wouldn't make it on his own and your babies will suffer and they need you. That was my defining moment. That was when I realized that it's not so much about me and what I want most of the time, but it's also about the people that are in my life and in my world of contact whose destiny is tied to mine. That was it for me. And that changed everything for me. My biggest weakness is I care too much, kindness. That's my biggest weakness. There's some times that I wish I could say no, but 
I found out that that is actually my nature. So, my kind-heartedness that is always misunderstood is my biggest weakness. I was created to have energy, and that's God. God motivates me. The Holy Spirit is in me. The Christ in me, the hope of glory. <sighs> the Holy Spirit is in me. That was good. That's what gives me all the energy that you see me. And I have a positive mental attitude towards life, and that can only come from the Holy Spirit. I would be my brand. Patillion is my brand, and that is my name, being creative. Patience. Well, I grew up with a father who was an entrepreneur, per excellence. My father was a man who knew how to diversify his resources. And like I said, we grew up in the cocoa plantation in Cross River States. And so I grew up in the cocoa warehouse, learning to dry cocoa in the um, traditional dryer oven when it's rainy season so that it doesn't get spoiled when it's taken out. Um, for exports. So I pretty much grew up learning how to farm, learning how to do farm work and all of that stuff. So my number one passion actually as I am right now is farming. I love farming. I love food. I love to see the fresh food and freshness. And I like to see people eat and be full. That's the truth. Um, so I have Patillion's farm where I do poultry and also have agricultural cash crop as well in the farm. And I do plant them in hectares. Um, Patillion um, Altitude is my trademark company. Um, it has the hair, the weave on synthetic, the heat resistance is synthetic, and of course the human hair. Then I sell cosmetic products, beauty products, everything you could think to make yourself look beautiful. The clothes, the jewelry, the all accessories, the handbags, the shoes. And then I have the lingerie session, which is just everything lingerie, the perfumes, the um, colons, the body spray, and of course the beautiful, sexy lingerie for both men and women. And then I have the, um, the supermarket side, which is like a superstore um, where we sell grocery, all kinds of groceries that you could ever think about. And of course, I have the wine and spirit section. And of course, I also have Lakush Nigeria Limited. Lakush Nigeria Limited is this big umbrella, you know, trademark as well. And that is what the entertainment aspect of my life is all about Lakush Towers Limited. That's the one that has my studio, my record label, my everything you could ever think of, entertainment. The Princess Pata Pabio show. It is open to the public now. Movie making, we were making film and all of that stuff. You could ever think about it. My writing as a writer because I'm writing my book as well at this time. Yes, there you go. And of course we have Lakush Nigeria Limited. And that's for the oil and gas. The rest, I'll leave to your imagination. You lend them as you go. I mustn't deal with everything that comes my way. It's not everything that people throw at you that you answer. One thing that I do believe is that, of course, I am not self-praising here or self-indulging, but I'm a woman who is self-fool. And so I love myself. And yes, I know that I'm beautiful and I'm attractive because I'm wonderfully and fearfully and beautifully made. I am the image of the invisible God. So yes, people will be attracted to me, men and women alike, okay? But I don't have to deal with the nonsense that you bring my way because, hey, I cannot control the way you feel about me, but I can control the way I respond to your advances to me. That's why I say I don't deal with it. So that's why a lot of people think that I'm a snob. I come out to be a snob, but actually I'm not a snob. I'm a classical snob. And oh, before you ask me what's a classical snob, I'll tell you what it is. A classical snob is a person who only snobs those people that denies her very existence. So if you deny my existence, <laughs> you don't exist either. Well, for the end of that, you will ask me that question. Have been able to cope with um, my being versatile and diversity, being able to diversify who I am, my personality, being a mother, being a wife, being an entrepreneur, being a preacher of the word of God, being a, a, a motivational speaker. One word, L-O-V-E, love. Love people not because they deserve it, but love them because that is the greatest commandment. I give myself to help people, to be there for people, because I believe in helping them, in loving them, it makes the world a better place. 
And so I treat people basically the way I would love to be treated. I give love, even when they don't appreciate it. I still give love. And I make everybody feel warm and welcome in my presence because, hey, I will only be remembered by what I have done in this life, how I made other people feel in my presence. And if you come to my house, my domestic staffs are like my biological siblings because of the way I treat them. If you come to the church, the way I treat every member is a family. I call it a family church. When you come to the city of praise, you are my family because we belong in the family of God. So treat people the way you want them to treat you. I learned a secret from my father. He said to me, if you want your workers to do right for you behind your back, treat them well. Make them feel appreciated when they are with you. And don't just give directive. When you give directive, also take out your own directive. Let them see you doing the job with them. Behind your back, they will do right. And treat those who take care of your children with care and love. When you are not around, they will treat your children as if they were to be their own. That's exactly my secret. And I know when to say, me time, because I have me time. I know when to say husband time. I know when to say children's time. And I know when to say it's family time. I know when to say it's ministry time. So I kind of have what we call an effective time management and effective team working with me. Unity. I would love to see more unity. There is no unity. We don't have unity. Everybody is selfish. I see, I see a lot of selfishness. I see a lot of selfish interest being expressed at every point in time. I don't see people showing love. I don't see people holding and hugging. Everybody wants to be a star. Everybody forgets that a tree cannot make a forest. We look good together. When I look at the stars in the galaxy, some shine brighter than others. The lumens are different. But was it God who created them all? He did. So why can't we be like stars in the galaxy? When you look at it in the night and how beautiful it is, all of them, as much as they shine with their own lumens, it adds beauty to the sky. So why can't we be united like the stars? I'm sure we can. So for me, I would change that lovelessness, that discrimination, that racism we have going on in the gospel saying that we are one body in Christ Jesus. I, I want to believe that all my kids are, they, they express themselves in their own ways to me and all of that stuff. And I love them for that. I love Ifyok because he wants to do the music. He's artistic by nature. He loves everything I do. He loves the stage life. And he will call you. He wants to know, Mom, what's going on with you? Your stats are these. I'm watching your YouTube channel. Mom, I just saw your article. I just read. Like, he stays in touch with me. So guess what? I work with him based on that. Then I have my daughter. My daughter is my news feeder. She feeds me everything that goes on in the world that I'm not even interested, I don't even want to know. Like I'm too busy trying to make good news. So she feeds me up and then it keeps me on my toes. Like, okay, so that happened, let me check myself. And she's the kind of person that mom, why don't you do this for your hair? So she's kind of like my information gadget right there. I love her for that. Then I have Daniel on this other hand, who every point in time, he just wants to be clinging. He wants to be huggy. He wants to just be around you without saying a word. He's playing his game, but he wants to be with you intimacy. I love him for that. But he's very detailed though because he listens to everything. ASEAN, on the other hand, oh Lord, that is a clown of the house. She makes me laugh even when I don't want to laugh. And she will support every motion, notion, everything. So my four kids have different things that I love them for. If you ask me to say, do I have a favorite? I'll tell you, no, I don't. Because four of them, four personalities, and they all fit into my big picture. One. One word for my husband, red gem among the rhinestones. You want to be like me? <laughs> kill self. If you can kill self, you would be everything God created you to be. And when I say kill self, you don't answer to everything that people call you. You don't have to. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Allow them to have it. Allow them to have center stage with it, but you don't have to be what they say you are. Love yourself 
and keep it real on 100 all the time. <sighs> Which country do I love to visit most? Honestly, you really want to know the truth? Nigeria. Well, if you want to get in touch with me, you want to get a hold of me, you want to talk to me, especially on my show, and you have concerns, um, you need advice from me as a motivational speaker, www.life, L-I-V-E with Pat, dot com. Life, www.life with Pat, dot com. And you can email me at cmca4, the number four, for life at gmail.com. You can see me on Instagram. I am on Instagram, Princess Pat Aquabio. I am on Twitter, Pat Aquabio. And I am on Facebook on my fan page, Evangelist Dash Princess Pat Aquabio. You can get a hold of me in any of those platforms and I will be there to answer any questions that you may have for me that I can help you with. And don't send me any kind of flimsy kind of emails. I don't respond to them. I am allergic to nonsense. Well, what is my message to the world? My message to the world is that you have one life to live. And whatever you do, make sure you live it well. At the end of the day, you will be held accountable to only one person, and that's God. You don't owe anybody any explanation how you choose to live your life except God. Allow the spirit of God that is inside of you be the one to guide your conscience. You know what? People live their life based on what people say. And some people go into depression because of what people say and write about them. Especially journalists, be careful what you write about other people. If it was done to you, I'm sure you may not like it. And then for those people who are professional judges, listen to me, mortals judging mortals. It doesn't hold water in a basket. I'm sure you know what I mean. You never know a book by the cover. But until you open the content, you read the content that is in the book. Be your brother's keeper. Eleanor Roosevelt said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I believe in the beauty of my dreams. That is why I'm living it. And like I would always say, life is quantum merit. What you put in is what you get out. Put in what you want to get out of life. Because in the end, you will reap what you sow. And don't forget to love yourself. Because if you love yourself, you can love anybody. <sighs> Be your best. We will celebrate you. Peace. Things are never what they seem to be. Changing minds. Changing attitudes. Bring yourselves to live a peace and one. Changing minds, changing attitudes, bring ourselves to live a peace and one. Show some love, hold each other's hands, in confidence we'll make the world a better place. We are changing minds and changing attitudes. Watch the Princess Patapapio Show.